The St. Norbert Arts Centre acknowledges that it is located on Treaty 1 lands, the original lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples and homeland of the Métis Nation. We've just been listening to Winnipeg's Phoebe Mann starting off our Valentine's music and comedy show. Now, Phoebe is originally from Hong Kong. Nay ho, Phoebe. She's been into j traditional Japanese taiko style drumming since 1989. Now, I know her as a founding member of the uh, Fabuki Daiko taiko drumming group here in Winnipeg, but she was also involved in a world music ensemble called Sand, and uh, you've probably even seen her in a group called Just Drummin'. Phoebe is an all-round artisan. She's incredible. She's quite an artist. She is singer, chanter, drummer, all, all around. Not only that, but she's an educator. She's taught me an awful lot about uh, art and understanding art. So thank you, Phoebe Mann. Well, shall we start the show? Yes, let's do that. Welcome to the St. Norbert Arts Centre free virtual presentation of From Our House to Your House with Love. Now this evening, the performance was made possible by funding from the City of Winnipeg and the Province of Manitoba. We received funding uh, and support from the City of Winnipeg Wellness Grant for the St. Norbert Seine River Ward. And we thank Councillor Marcus Chambers for his continued support. You're a great guy, Marcus. Thank you so much. We also received funding from the Safe at Home Manitoba Grant Program. So my hat is off to all of you folks. Thank you. The staff and board members of the St. Norbert Arts Centre planned this virtual Valentine's event thinking about the importance of laughter and how during this unprecedented year, laughter may be just what we all need. Oh, excuse me. We have invited some amazing artists to perform, and we'll also take you on a virtual visit to the St. Norbert Arts Centre, which is located in the town of St. Norbert, Manitoba, tucked on a five-acre forest, which is wrapped by the LaSalle River. We started off our show with Phoebe Mann, and coming up, we've got Glenn Williams with Rock Calypso, singer-songwriter Jace Bodner, and we've, we're delighted to have three performers who grew up in St. Norbert. Violinist Heather Stewart and singer Chandra Levrault and comedian Dean Jenkinson. But first of all, let's listen to a little bit of history of this place. The St. Norbert Art Centre is situated in St. Norbert on the site of the Trappist Monastery, formerly known as the Our Lady of the Prairies Monastery. For 85 years, this was the home of more than 50 Trappist monks. Through the hard work and devotion of the monks, the monastery became a prosperous agricultural operation. 
In 1978, the monks sought a new home in Holland, Manitoba. The guest house building of the Trappist monks has been the home of the St. Norbert Arts Centre since 1991. The centre has been operating for over 30 years, offering a wide variety of artistic, spiritual, historical and ecological programmes and events. The St. Norbert Arts Centre is dedicated to cultural expression, education and environmental stewardship. Situated on on a site of spiritual, cultural, historical, and environmental significance. Site stewardship is the backbone of the Centre's effort to promote earth, spirit, and culture. The St. Norbert Arts Centre's role as a community creator, a presenter, a facilitator, a publisher, a public space, and an historic site express core values of diversity, equality, and harmony. Past projects have seen collaboration in diverse fields such as education, academics, activist practices, healthcare, and spirituality. Snack's continuing vision of organic process-driven collaboration between all players is an important community building endeavor. In addition to offering tonight's event free of charge, the Snack Board of Directors is offering the community half price memberships till the end of April. Please contact our executive director at snac at snac.mb.ca to sign up for your annual individual couples or family membership. A membership will give you a discount on some of the upcoming programs, events, and workshops, and also help to support our programming. Please visit our website for more information at snac.mb.ca. Buju, hello, my name is Michael Pierre. My traditional name is Kimangasid Mayingan, which translates to Clubfoot Wolf. I'm part of the Kingfisher Clan, Nighthawk Warrior Spirit, and I come from Thunder Bay, Ontario. We're here at the ceremonial grounds at St. Norbert Arts Centre. There are currently two sweat lodges on this ceremony site. Um, our lodge is looked after by myself and my wife, Christine, Dancing Eagle Woman. The second lodge is looked after by Debbie Seelan and her partner, Daryl. Thunder Bird Birdman and Good Talking Turtle. These grounds are a place of sacred healing energy and have helped hundreds if not thousands of people over the years heal their hearts, minds, bodies and spirit. As lodge keepers and stewards of Mother Earth, we hold this area in the highest regard. If a comparison was ever to be made, this would be our church or temple, our mosque or other prayer site. Many ceremonies occur on these grounds, including sweat lodge ceremonies, sacred teaching fires, sharing circles, chibai or grieving ceremonies for those that have gone on to the spirit world, traditional fasts and feasts and other forms of meditation, medicine picking and preparations, as well as monthly full moon ceremonies. The idea of building a traditional Buddhist stupa or peace pagoda on the Trappist monastery grounds came to be during the Tibetan sacred arts in the ruins three-week residency with over 30 artists and performers from across Canada, the U.S., and from Dharmasala, India. The Dharma Center of Winnipeg and the Burmese community were looking for a location to build a traditional pakoda. Saidu Wufilawunta, a senior Burmese monk, had a vision to build pagodas around the planet and the specific vision to build one in the geographic center of Canada, near a forest and river. The Peace Pagoda it is meant to harness the spiritual energy through the crystal at the top and into the earth and connecting that energy to all other pagodas around the planet. It is a tool for walking meditation. As you walk counterclockwise around the base of the pagoda, your peripheral vision of the outline of the pagoda remains a stabilizing influence on your body, allowing a deeper meditation. It is designed it is designed to enable a deep relaxation to promote world peace. Whoa! Hey, you've probably seen our next performer as part of the group, The Mother Funk. But he's also worked as a music mentor and producer for the Youth Creators Club at the Broadway Neighborhood Center. And he's produced music for 47 film works. 
He's the 2020 winner of Just TV's Jerry Atwell Award for his dedication to making an impact on his community through art. Here he is, Jace Bodner. Are you there, Jace? Are you gonna, you're gonna play something? Yes, excellent. Okay, here's Jace. and serenity of the beautiful grounds, gardens, and pathways are open to be enjoyed by all, all year round. This fall, the Arts Centre offered Garden Walk, Stretch, and Reconnect, a walking program that included presentations on historic St. Norbert, nutrition, and gardening. This free program is open to the public and will resume in the spring. The St. Norbert Arts Centre's board is currently in the process of raising funds for a multifaceted beautification program to enhance and develop the walking trails and gardens. 
refurbish the outdoor restaurant and patio and build an outdoor stage and seating area. Speaking of seating areas, I want to find a place that I can sit down and enjoy the rest of this program. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Ah, that's much better, yes. Ah, just relax. Whoa, oh dear, oh my, oh dear, oh yes. Oh, it's all right, we're all right, don't worry. Hey, our next performer grew up in St. Norbert and she played at the St. Norbert Farmer's Market as a young artist. But lately, she's been performing throughout North America and Europe, playing live on BBC Radio. She was jamming with Nigel Kennedy and performing world premieres at the St. Petersburg Philharmonia. She's been a soloist with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra, and she's played at the Royal Albert Hall, Royal Festival Hall, Queen Elizabeth Hall, Roy Thompson Hall, and the National Arts Centre. Lately, she's been involved in educational outreach as part of the Benedetti Foundation team and regularly works with thousands of children online on both the violin and viola. Recently, she's recorded for Decca Records alongside Nicola Benedetti and is currently in studio residence at the St. Norbert Arts Centre. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, Canadian violinist Heather Ann Stewart. <laughs>
Louise May, the founder of the St. Norbert Arts Center, had a vision to create a welcoming community art space in a spiritual place where all different kinds of artists would access and collaborate, create and share new work on social justice and environmental issues. To recognize the significant contributions of the late Jerry Atwell to the St. Norbert Arts Center's development and programming, we have started a mentorship program in his name, as well as Jerry Fest dedicated to his life and work. Our program committee has been working hard to develop a variety of indoor and outdoor programs and workshops related to fitness, culture, ethnicity, diversity, and art. Our pilot arts mentorship program would see emerging artists selected from underrepresented communities and supported through a mentorship program resulting, e resulting each year with live performances at Jerry Fest. To help celebrate Black History Month, we, have, we will share posters produced from the amazing artwork created during Jerry Fest 2020, when visitors were asked to envision a world without racism. With COVID-19 health restrictions, we moved our guest house concert series and workshops to online platforms. We were very excited about our March Madness celebration. We have cooking classes and art workshops that circle the globe, as well as a global dance party on Friday, March 26th, heading into spring break. Please stay tuned in to our Facebook and websites for details on events we have lined up and watch for our summer events and for Jerry Fest, which is scheduled for August 13th weekend. We hope that you will visit our house real soon, but for now, please just continue to enjoy our virtual events. Back in 1990, our pal Jerry Atwell, along with Glenn Williams, formed a group called Rock Calypso. And over the past 30 years, this group of incredibly talented musicians and vocalists took the rich rhythms of the Caribbean to trade fairs, exhibitions, conventions, casinos, and beach parties throughout Canada and the US. They are a regular band at Club Regent in Transcona. Tonight, Glenn is going to give us an up close and personal show accompanied by Doug Wilson. Get ready to dance everybody because here's Glenn Williams. <laughs>
Oh, 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 oh. 
The guest house is available to rent for all of those special occasions. We regularly welcome people to celebrate their special day in our gallery and grounds. Whether you are celebrating a wedding, a bridal or baby shower, a retirement or remembering the passing of a loved one, the gallery can accommodate groups of up to 75. Heather and Josie celebrated their wedding with us and thanked us with these kind words. We had such a great time in your beautiful space. Thank you for all your help and the help of your team here. They were great and so friendly. Our next performer has a voice that spans over four decades, full of soul, blues, and country. Hailing from small town roots in southwestern Manitoba, she's taken her versatility to almost every stage you can imagine, from Las Vegas to country roots and classic rock events. There aren't many vocalists who can jump from genre to genre and nail it every time. Tonight she's accompanied by Tom Dudium. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, Chandra Lavro. Well, welcome down, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, we hope you're staying safe with your Valentine or without. Not mandatory. Uh, we are so happy that the St. Norbert Art Center asked us to be part of this today. Um, so this is Tom Duty. I'm on Shandra Libro and we'll be here for the next 20 minutes. Enjoy. <laughs> Here comes the 
like that. Actually, this is kind of another body rating tune. Kind of. She did it. It's a John Prine tune. Is it? I didn't know. Yeah.
St. Norbert is so pleased to have several on-site vendors. Aurora Farm, Hollow Reed School of Arts and Herbals, Modern Plate, Evoke, Body and Mind, providing a wide range of artistic and holistic offerings. We will soon be running a regular schedule of artisan markets featuring local Manitoba artisans offering an extensive variety of products, including homemade honey, natural goat milk products, handmade crafts, and jewelry creations. The Globe and Mail states our MC for this evening is a tour de force of ingenious, charming silliness. Juno Award winner Al Simmons is a creative genius whose charm and humanity have won over a legion of fans at theaters and festivals around the world. His highly original performances of profound wackiness and his off-the-wall inventions take the arts of music and comedy to unparalleled heights of hilarity. Elle is a long-time supporter of St. Norbert Arts Centre and was our first MC for the Jerry Fest, annual Jerry Fest 2020. Thanks for being with us. Take it away, Elle. Well, all right. I feel like singing you a happy little tune right now. Here we go, go like this. Next performer, our last performer, rounding off the show, is a ding-dong daddy from Winnipeg. Now, this is a comedian who's appeared on CTV's Comedy Now, CBC's Winnipeg Comedy Festival, and the Royal Canadian Air Force. He's been a writer for CBC's This Hour is 22 Minutes since 2007, and has been has written numerous Just for a Laugh specials, creating material for such acts as the Muppets, Joan Rivers, Sarah Silverman, and the cast members of the Big Bang Theory. Dean is a frequent guest, fr fr fragrant, fr fragrant. Dean is a fragrant guest, a frequent and fragrant guest on CBC Radio's The Debaters, and. He regularly performs community and corporate events across Canada. He's also one of the head honchos of the Winnipeg Comedy Festival. It's Dean Jenkinson, everybody. Hey, Dean, give us the inside scoop with all of the regulations and all of that going on. Are we going to be able to gather in a group inside a theater and watch and laugh at a comedy show this year at the Winnipeg Comedy Festival? Can we get together and be a live audience once again? Please say yes. Will it work? <laughs> well, thank you, Al. Uh, the answer is, I don't know. But we're crossing our fingers that sometime before the end of 2021, we'll get to have a live Winnipeg Comedy Festival and we'll get to tape our regular Winnipeg Comedy Festival television show. So is that a good 
answer. Hi, everybody. Thank you for that awkward throw, Al. I appreciate that. How's it going, sir? I uh, I appreciate Deb. Uh, if you look in the chat, everybody, Deb said, for Dean's performance, we ask that you turn on your cameras and unmute your mics so that I can interact with you all. So if you, if you don't mind, you can. If you want to stay completely anonymous and silent, feel free. But I am here with you live. If you're here with me live, we can chat with each other. If you say something, I'll be able to hear you. If you say something to somebody in the next room, we'll also be able to hear you, which is maybe not what we want. But uh, if uh, uh, comedy generally is an interactive art form, and that's why during COVID, it's been miserable. But I do remember about 83 years ago, it seems like when I started stand up comedy, I did say to a friend of mine, I said, you know, it'd be great. It'd be great if one day we could do comedy from the comfort of our own homes. If there was some kind of machine in front of us that would take our show to everyone, and they could see us from the comfort of our homes, So we didn't have to travel to them. And also what would be great is if we could make literally dozens of dollars a year doing this. And also, if the reason we did it is because the air that came out of their faces might kill us. So I think I got most of that prediction right. I don't know how I came up with that, but uh, it was pretty bang on. But look at all of you. This is very nice. How are all of you? I can see a lot of you. I can see most of you didn't plan on being seen. You're just set up in your home. <laughs> You're just looking like, hey, we didn't get dressed up to go out. We got dressed up to sit in front of a box. That's what we did. But it's very nice to see you all. There's so many people looking at me like now. It's, uh, my gosh, I feel like I'm leading a Steinbeck COVID church service. Look at me. This is <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> what are the last shows I, and by the way, do you appreciate, my kids help me with this. I don't uh, chicken out on the uh, Valentine's Day show set, folks. We blew up seven balloons for you, and uh, we scotch taped them to the wall. So tomorrow we'll be doing paint touch-ups. And I hope you appreciate the effort we put into all of this. But uh, we found seven white and red and one, no, I guess two. We got two pink balloons. This one's kind of a jewel tone and this one's a pastel. I can't touch them too hard or they'll fall down and then we'll have to start all over. One of the last live shows I did, I want to tell you about. I actually, I did a show in Steinbeck. It was a little fundraiser like tonight's. And uh, uh, it was worth the trip. I will say that. And... Uh, <laughs> I saw this. I don't know if this will make you laugh. I don't know if anything I'm going to say tonight will make you laugh. But I saw they have Fabutan tanning salons in Steinbeck, Manitoba. Does that seem wrong to anyone else but me to have tanning booths in a hardworking rural Mennonite community like Steinbeck? And I think for the authentic Steinbeck look, you leave the T-shirt on in the booth, wouldn't you? Wouldn't that make sense? <laughs> A farmer's tan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How am I doing for time, everyone? I, I'm supposed to fill 30 minutes. Am I about done? Oh, no. I think I left too much time for laughter and applause after that first joke. I need to pace myself better. I'm not used to doing stand-up comedy from home yet. Well, you know what they say, folks, about stand-up comedy. It is like riding a bike. Do it wrong, and tonight is the night you will die. But... Um, <laughs> I think of all the things I miss about lockdown and being out in the world, I think the thing I miss most, and I don't know if you can, uh, oh, that's, I just got a good view of Mary Anderson's pants. I don't know if you can see that, folks. How are you, <laughs> Mary? <laughs> Mary just stood up and showed me <laughs> the pants she's wearing, which, God bless you, Mary. That's more than a lot of people did today. A lot of people are here just in her shirt. I can guarantee that. I can absolutely guarantee that. But um, I have no idea what I was talking about. Oh, the thing I miss most about uh, being out in the world, it's coughing in people's faces. That used to be a good time. Do you remember just getting together with a bunch of friends on a Friday night and you'd say, turn to the person on your left and cough and turn to the person on your right and cough. And then you just see who can get each other the wettest. And now people think that's rude. But one day we'll get back to it. But it, it's, it's, a, it's an honor. It's an honor to be among you tonight, folks. And I spell the word honor, by the way, the good Canadian way. I spell it with a U. I hope you all do that. Don't be like the Americans who like to cheat out. Skip the U in words like honor, color, right? I learned this year why Americans don't spell words like honor with a U. Apparently, that's three things Americans don't care about. Spelling, honor, 
and you. So right there. <laughs> but it's wonderful to be here for the uh, such a good cause, the Jerry Atwell Memorial Mentorship Fund. I, I love doing things for charitable uh, events and for good causes because it reminds me that life is not about being self-involved and I can be very self-involved. I think I'm easily the most self-involved person uh, that I'm aware of, certainly. There could be people more self-involved. How would I know? I have no idea what you're up to, but I'm starting to get involved, or I was <laughs> before the, uh, the pandemic hit. I just signed up uh, with the Big Brothers organization, and that had been going very well. Every Saturday, a 60-year-old guy would come pick me up, and he would take me to the zoo. <laughs> so sweet. But every show is different. This one's going to be interesting, I can tell already. How are you, Judy? It looks like you have motorcycle helmets, uh, like goggles on your head, but I'm sure that's not what I'm looking at. What is it I'm looking at, Judy? Can you unmute and tell me? A hat. A hat. <laughs> well, that's that's easy. I just saw the two things that went like this, and and I have a little I have a little matchbox on my screen, which is this big. I have a tiny little matchbox yeah. image of you, and so it looked. And who is next to you? Is that? Uh, it is. I'm sorry. Your grandson? Good to see you. All right. I'm going to edit a lot of jokes out now that I know it's a family show. That's what I'm about to yeah. do. No, I'm, I'm very prepared to do a very boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is going to be wonderful. But uh, every show is different. Every show is different. I'm excited to do this one. The most uh, interesting show I did before lockdown, I got to host the University of Manitoba alumni dinner. They said, come and host our dinner, tell some jokes after dinner, because uh, I happen to be an alumnus of the University of Manitoba. I happen to have an architecture degree from the U of M, which was a very poor <laughs> investment, I have to say, because <laughs> here we are, and I don't know how this roof is over my head, but uh, I was seated with people for dinner who had gone on to much, much higher education than I will ever achieve in my life. Just it's so smart, and I'm feeling very kind of out of my element. You know, the couple next to me, uh, he was an entomologist and his wife was an etymologist, if you can believe it. So he would tell you about all kinds of insects and their various characteristics and attributes. And then she would chime in with the root derivations of those insects' names, be it Greek or Latin <laughs> or whatever you have. And, oh, they had no friends, but they were so smart. <laughs> they were so smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'll ask you, if you haven't done this already, if you could silence any uh, devices that you have, you don't want to be that that person who accidentally shows up in the big screen because your phone went off. I, uh, I always remind the stand-up comedy crowds in person to do that. Some people get mad. I had a guy stand, he's waving his phone at me. I'm a surgeon. I could be paged into surgery at any moment. You can't ask me to turn this off. And I say, buddy, we're, we're Manitoba. A two-hour wait for surgery is nothing, really. We should be so lucky. Health Canada has a new slogan, time heals all wounds. So there we go. Mm -mm -mm. I hope you're enjoying a beverage tonight, folks. I have had three so far. So I'm going to have some very good memories of tonight's show. Oh, man, I have been uh, hunkered down. I've been watching a lot of Netflix. I saw a uh, kind of scary thriller. I don't know if you've seen it. It's about Judas. Do you remember Judas from the Bible? It's called I Know What You Did Last Supper. Don't see that. It's a bad movie. It's a bad joke for that matter. But I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to get out in the world more. I, I don't like sticking inside too much. I ran some errands the other day. I went to the auto parts shop. I asked the guy if I could get a new set of windshield wipers for my 78 Rabbit. And uh, he said that sounds like a fair trade. So here we are. <laughs> But it's been tough being inside. I don't know if anybody is anybody else getting stir crazy. Do you want to be back out in the world? I've realized I'm more of an outdoors person. I didn't think that about myself. I thought I was kind of more a couch person. Whoops! I just got my foot tangled in my cord. Did you see that? Camera just moved on me. I uh, I have uh, I have I have a fondness for my couch, but I, I think outdoors is better than indoors. That's what I've learned during lockdown. When you think about outdoors versus indoors, what would you what would you pick? I mean, I'm I'm a middle aged white male of European descent. We may not have invented indoors 
but I think we perfected it, didn't we? And like every other thing that white European males have done, mankind has paid a pretty bad price for it. Carbon monoxide, radon, black mold, gas leaks, COVID, that's all indoor stuff, right? Office cubicles by day, lazy boy recliners at night where you just sit motionless waiting for the sweet release of cancer that is indoors. You know, when you were a kid, <laughs> you, your friends would come to the door and say, can you come out and play? And you'd be happy, right? And then a few hours later, your mom would come to the front door and she would shout, time to come in. And you would be sad because in your unspoiled childhood wisdom, you understood that outdoors are superior, right? If somebody calls you outdoorsy, that is a compliment paid with respect. If somebody calls you indoorsy, not so much. There are no avid indoorsmen proudly proclaiming their love of the great indoors. Just shifty loners whose neighbors are telling the police later, oh, he was always so quiet. Who knew he killed all those people? <laughs> when you sit at school or you sit at work, what is your natural inclination? It's to look longingly out a window. The only people who stare longingly in a window are perverts. Right? <laughs> There's a reason that it's always a crack house. It is never a crack meadow because indoors is where misery coalesces until the human psyche becomes overwhelmed with despair and you long for the escape of chemical oblivion. Indoors is miserable. Would you rather have fluorescent light or, 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 or sunlight, right? Would you rather the crunch of leaves beneath your feet or the crunch of Legos beneath your feet? Would you rather have recess or would you rather have detention? Would you rather the warden give you time in the yard or time in the box? Yeah. Indoors is miserable. Ask any gay person if they were happier before or after they came out. I rest my case, Your Honor. <laughs> Oh, now might be a good time to thank my sponsor. Uh, by the way, my show tonight is sponsored by the um, cookbook Baking for Sedentary Office Workers. Baking for Sedentary Office Workers, you can find it at your local library. It is filed under the doughy desk people system. <laughs> Come on, folks. If there's a generation for that joke, it's the one watching tonight. <laughs> the millennials do not understand that joke. There are no Dewey Decimal System jokes that the millennials get. Uh, I, I did do some baking during the, uh, the lockdown. Anybody do any baking? Who learned a new uh, baking recipe? No? Just me? <laughs> I learned bread. That's what I learned. I learned flour, salt, water, and yeast. You leave it for three hours and you throw it in the oven. That's what I learned. I could do it in my sleep now. And I'm very proud of myself. I, I did it during that first lockdown when it was like 24 hour parenting and homeschooling. So I just, I did it because I wanted one thing in my house that could raise itself. That's all I wanted was <laughs> one thing that was self-raising. But, uh, it makes you connected to your ancestors. That's how you feel, don't you? You know, when you bake something from hand from your hands, when you go and you get flour and water and salt, just like your ancestors did, right? And then you Google yummiest cinnamon buns recipe, just like your ancestors did. Doesn't that connect you to your past? Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, I do have two kids, uh, two kids that are my own. I have three kids in, under my house. I have, I have a blended family. And the blending is going very well. Every once in a while, we get out a spatula and scrape down the sides of the house and uh, find everybody again. But uh, I have uh, two that are my own. And uh, Lucy is my, um, I guess the technical word is stepchild. Every time I say that out loud, I feel like a Disney villain. Like I make her sleep in the cellar with the, with the mice. She scrubs the floors and I make her eat brisk scraps. Stepchild, that seems like a slur. That seems like I could get in trouble for saying it, but I guess that's the right term. So I don't have any jokes about Lucy. She's kind of off limits because, you know, she's downstairs watching on YouTube with her mom. But um, <laughs> The two girls, I have two girls who are like 11 and 10, Lucy and Kara is my daughter. And, uh, and I got a boy who's eight, Casey and the girls. Oh my gosh, they're so smart. 
They're so smart. They're smart kids. And then my son, uh, he's nice. He's nice. He's a nice kid. I don't know. He might be bright in his own way, but I haven't seen the proof yet. You know, I see the wheels turning and oh my gosh, there seems to be an awful lot of sand in those gears. I can't, uh, I can't figure out what's happening with him. He's a nice kid though, but he says stuff that makes me wonder. Like we were out by Cinnamon Park uh, a couple of days ago and we see this giant squirrel. I am talking the size of a good sized skunk or a medium sized cat. This giant squirrel goes bounding across Corridon. And I say to him, oh my gosh, Casey, look at the size of that squirrel. And what comes out of my eight year old son's mouth is, baby, he's just really close up. <laughs> yeah, sure, buddy. Maybe a regular sized squirrel ran across the street right here, right across the bridge of your nose. Maybe that's what happened. We went for a walk by the Seine River and we saw these trees and they had like a, a ton of, of uh, um, chicken wire. They had a ton of chicken wire wrapped around the base of the trees. And I said, oh, look at the chicken wire around the trees. There must be a lot of beavers here. And my eight-year-old son says, wait, I didn't know beavers put chicken wire around trees. <laughs> so I'm not saving for university for them. That's not a, that's not a smart investment. <laughs> He's a good kid. He's going to turn out fine, but it's not going to be because he's an intellectual. But uh, Kara, oh my gosh, Kara, my daughter, she's, uh, she's bright. She's like ahead of her time, but she's one of these kids who's smart in a very intense, very self-conscious kind of way where she doesn't like any moment in her lifetime when she feels like she's dumb or she doesn't know what she's doing or there's something new that I'm going to have to try and maybe fail at because failure and effort. I don't want that. I want to be good at something right away. And if I'm not, then it's not worth doing. And I'll give you an example. The other day I'm watching her, she's doing a drawing and it's a fine 10 year old's drawing. You know, would I put it in an art gallery? No, but would I put it on the fridge? No, but a fine <laughs> 10 year old's drawing, but I see her kind of take a, a step back and she looks at it with a critical eye. And she sees it's not perfect. And she angrily crumples it up and throws it away, right? Sees it's not perfect, angrily throws it away. And I said to her, wow, I think you got that from your mom. She did that with the marriage. That's what I said in my head. I didn't say that out loud. Mom was from Quebec. So, you know, naturally, eventually she's going to want to separate. Um <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking out the comments for the first time. Lloyd says, I found a great scone recipe. I'm sorry, uh, Lloyd, I'm four minutes behind on the comments. If you, if you want to, if you want to send me the uh, scone recipe, you can friend me on Facebook, send me a scone recipe. I would make scones. I might even learn to say it proper, properly, properly. <laughs> I don't know if it's pronounced scone or scone. Anybody who's got their mic on wants to tell me how to pronounce that word. I think it's scone. Scone. All right. I'm going to say scone until I'm corrected. I appreciate that. Katrina, is that right? Yep, that's right. You've oh. made it tough on me, too, because that's not how I would spell Katrina. You got a lot of unnecessary vowels in there. It's There's Irish. no... It's it Irish? <laughs> is that what you said? It's Irish, and it could be worse. There's That's true. Extra letters. <laughs> that's true. I have a friend named Siobhan. Oh, yes. And yes, she that's spells the... that in, a, in just a ridiculous way. There's no V... <laughs> It's like S I O B B H Q W <laughs> five exclamation point 12. It just goes on forever. And then you say, okay, you just say it for me and I'll repeat it back. And then I'm never going to try to decipher it oh, again. again. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got Katrina, but if you think that's how you spell Katrina, I am skeptical. That's how you pronounce scone. <laughs> 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 all right who else wants to <laughs> yeah <laughs> i dare you <laughs> well thank you for thank you for chatting uh katrina i appreciate you chatting with me and i apologize that uh your your participation in the show led to me insulting you that was very rude of me how could i how could i reward somebody who participated in my show with an insult i'm feeling like a right jackass is that also irish a right jackass <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a bit British to me. <laughs> I think it does. What's a, what's a good Irish 
insult. I know one, but you, I, I wouldn't say it on a family call. <laughs> Good Irish insult. Oh, well, you know, when I was uh, growing up, uh, my mom said to me once, you have a voice that belongs on the stage. Ah. And I think she was dead for about six years before I realized it was an insult. How so? Because that sounds like everyone would want to hear you say, say things, say words. Let, let, let everybody hear your voice. Yeah, not within a house. You don't want a voice that belongs on the stage within the walls oh, of the house. Oh, she was calling you way too loud. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I need some lessons from your mom on how to passive aggressively insult my children so they think they're complicated or they're complimented until long after I'm dead. Exactly. Exactly. They're very. Oh, my very gosh. I, your mom should have written a book. Huh? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Complimentary burns for your children. That mm -hmm. would be a book that I would have bought. I love that so much. Well, thank you for chatting, Katrina. I'm going to get back to the rest of the people, but I could talk to you for the rest of my time. That's, uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> uh, my daughter is fascinated. This, was a, this is what I do for uh, work, or at least what I used to do for work before uh, a virus <laughs> turned this into a hobby. But... Um, she would she would ask me about it and she would say, well, how do jokes work? And I try to explain to her as best I know how a joke works. And the one thing I could establish with her is uh, one way of making a joke is that if, if a word exists that has two meanings, there's your pivot point, right? You can th make people think you mean this meaning of the word when in fact you meant the other meaning of the word and then that becomes clear and there's a joke. Ta-da, it's, it's comedy magic. So she's wrapped her head around that. And she's gone, to, she's gone to work and she said to me the other day, she says, okay, I think I've come up with my own joke. So I said, all right, let's hear it. She says to me, okay, what did Darth Vader say when the stormtroopers wouldn't do what he wanted? And I said, I don't know, honey, what did he say? She says, don't make me force you get it, dad, the force, force you get it, the force, force you and i'm like absolutely honey absolutely you have met the dictionary definition of what a joke is congratulations i'm very proud of you and then uh, casey her brother's got to get in on the fun because he sees what we're doing he goes okay okay i got one i go on what did darth vader say when the stormtroopers wouldn't do what he wanted i'm gonna kill you <laughs> And I did what some of you did. I laughed way harder at that because that's pretty funny, right? And that drives her nuts. She's like, what are you laughing at? Why is that funny? That's not a joke. What are you laughing? How is that a joke? That's not funny. And I say to her, honey, I understand, but let that be a lesson of the world we live in. A mediocre boy who does not try is often going to be more successful than a smart girl who does. It's not fair. It's the world we live in. Yes. And now let daddy tell you about who was president for four years <laughs> and who was not president for four years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm the guy who should be here on a Valentine's Day show, by the way, because, uh, you know, I, I've tried the marriage thing. I haven't made it work. Um, I, I'm trying to acquire relationship skills. I think there are people on the call who have been far more successful at keeping a relationship together that I have. Uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the lovely woman I'm with, Tammy is her name. Uh, we've been together a couple of years now and, and um, God willing, and if I put in the effort and we have patience and forgiveness for each other, this is the one we're gonna die together and not this year. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I have not done well at relationships in my life. I think the only thing I've learned, gentlemen, if I can give anybody any relationship advice, Filter what you say. That has not been my strong suit. Filter what you say. As a young man, it doesn't occur to you. You think, what do I want to say? What are the words that I need to put together to say the thing that I want? Right? And now as an older man, I filter everything I say twice. Right? I think, what do I want to say? First filter. What might she hear? Often very different, gentlemen. And then for an extra layer of protection, what might a crazy person hear? Not that anybody's crazy. All I'm saying is build redundancy into the system. You don't build a bridge to withstand only the load it's going to carry. And then a bird lands on a truck and poof, the whole thing goes down. You got to build redundancy in. Make it way stronger than it needs to be. Otherwise, bad things happen. Here's a story from my life. We're seven months 
into the first pregnancy. My wife at the time, across the table, nourishing our unborn child at an incredible rate. I'm not judging. I'm simply describing what's happening. If you had a monitor and you were watching in another room, you would say, is there a contest that they didn't tell that guy about? And he's losing very badly. But look through my eyes. Here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the woman I love giving our unborn child everything it needs for an extraordinary start in life. And with a heart overflowing with love and admiration. Here's what I said. Look at you go. How did she not hear the love and admiration in those words? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I've gotten better. I've gotten much better. Here's a more recent example. Uh, a few years later, the kids are like six and four. Uh, we're putting them to bed, the bedtime routine, you know, like seven, seven thirty. Let's uh, shut everything down, turn off the music, shut off the show, put away the toys, whatever it is that we're doing. Let's uh, wind down, put on the pajamas. Uh, have a little snack on the couch, read a book, and then we'll tuck you into bed after we brush teeth. And then you can get out of bed 150 times between now and midnight. Because that's all kids would do, right? That's all kids do is just, I need a drink of water. All right, go have a drink of water. I had a bad dream. No, 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 you haven't been to sleep. That's not how it works. You had a, you had a scary thought. That's what happened. Right? You need to tuck me in. That was my four-year-old. When Casey was four, he was like, you need to tuck me in. And I'd come in, the t you know, the blankets are down here. And he's like, you need to pull them up to here. This is beyond my motor skills as a four-year-old human being. And if you don't do this, my frozen corpse will be on your conscience, his words. And so you tuck them in. And then, you know, around about, you know, 10, they're finally asleep, baby. And you do some dishes and you pack some school lunches. And then it's like 10, 30, 11. And you figure, all right, our day is finally done. Our parenting marathon is an, as an, as at an end, but you don't want to go to bed because the last thing you want to be the next thing is morning, right? So you're like, all right, let's, let's go downstairs. We'll turn on Netflix. We'll watch one show. We'll push morning back one hour. But you know, if you turn on Netflix, you can't watch one show, right? Because they just queue up the next one and then the next one. And then all of a sudden it's four in the morning and Netflix is like, are you still watching? And I'm like, I'm just as surprised as you are, Netflix. I did not plan this. And uh, quite frankly, Netflix, I don't like your tone. But yes, yes, we are still watching. So there we are in our shame and our self-loathing. And uh, <laughs> my wife at the time, she turns to me and she says, you know, you could you could carry me upstairs if you were stronger. And I was like, wow, I did not realize we had turned on each other. But I filtered and I did not say, or if you were lighter, Hmm. 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 Because you want to be happy, right? You filter, gentlemen. You want to be happy. A scientific study says a happily married man is three times more likely to survive a stroke than an unhappily married man. Can you believe that? Pretty sure it's because the happily married man's wife will call nine one one. I don't think there's anything physiological going on. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hard to live through a medical emergency with a vengeful woman standing over you. Yeah, I bet that hurts. Yeah, look at you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a couple minutes left, folks. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sing you a little song. I'm going to wish you a very, um, very, very happy uh, Valentine's Day. I, uh, I, I encourage you, if you, if you have any funds to donate to the Mentorship Fund, please <laughs> do. It's such a wonderful cause. And, uh, and thank you for coming. I hope you've had a, a good time this evening. Did you enjoy yourself? Yes, both of you. All right, perfect. Here we go. So I'll leave you with a song about, uh, let's see, I'm gonna, I got this here. I'm gonna take this under there. There we go. So I'm gonna leave you a song. I'm not a, I'm not a hypochondriac by any stretch. I have never been somebody who has gotten a little bit sick and thought uh, the end is near. But COVID has kind of got me a little more in that mode. And, and I see things and I'm getting a little paranoid. And I look around my house and uh, you'll see what I'm saying. Here's a song about that. Well, my cell phone has got a virus and the darn thing nearly wrecked it. And the computer chip on my car and fridge have also been infected. And the more I look around my house, the more I realize that every single thing I own has an illness of some kind. 
For instance, my socks all have the runs. My bass guitar is in a funk. My snowblower must be sick, cause when I use it, it blows chunks. My stairs are up and down, and my globe's bipolar too. My teddy bear, my <laughs> Oh, I've screwed it up, folks. I have a method for never making mistakes when I sing a song, but it involves practice, and that is out of the question. My egos just feel waffle. My fireplace has the flu. My teddy bear's all stuffed up, though I never see him sneeze. My sarcophagus is a coffin. <laughs> Might have Graves' disease. My mop bucket's a little pale, and this is not a joke. My rooftop has the shingles. My golf club had a stroke. Twelve more verses. <laughs> My sweater's angorophobic, though the outside isn't scary. My hubba bubba has gum disease in my smoothie. Berry berry. My footprints have depression. That I have no doubt. And my maple tree is sapped. And my light bulbs feel burnt out. My sneakers' tongues are hanging out like my car. They're exhausted. My freezer has cold sores, or at least it's always frosted. My TV's a little paranoid. Feels like it's always being watched. My bread maker has a yeast infection. <laughs> and doesn't even have a crutch folks thank you so so much thank you for coming out tonight i wish you a very happy valentine's day and i got some special guests here who want to wish you the very same come on in everybody here they are happy valentine's day everybody happy valentine's day happy valentine's day so for coming. well that's the end of our concert folks Thanks for joining the St. Norbert Arts Centre board, staff and performers tonight for the first ever virtual concert presentation from our house to your house with love. Featuring Phoebe Mann, Jace Bodner, Heather Stewart, Glenn Williams, Chandra Lavro, and Dean Jenkinson. Now, as we end tonight, please stay tuned for a few thank yous and information on how to get in touch with the Arts Center. If you're interested in a membership or booking the gallery or just finding out more information on upcoming events. So, from our house to your house, this is Al Simmons saying good night, everybody. Thank you.